We have indeed. Just as we uh, sort of sent you off to Byron, we spotted this amazing track in the mud and we couldn't work out what had created it. And then Sebastian pointed out what it was. It is a water scorpion. It looked like a piece of bark sitting on the bottom of the mud. And that's incredible. I don't know when I last saw a water scorpion, but you do see them if you look hard enough. But as you can see, they blend in very, very well with the bottom. It is covered with mud at the moment. And they're not related to scorpions at all. They just look fairly similar because of those front legs. And Siberia Sumi, you're actually wondering if I could find one. Well, here we go. This is just for you, and it is absolutely beautiful. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm just trying to remember what family they're in. Nepidae, oh, I cannot I remember. I was reading about this not so long ago, just the other day, in fact. And um, so it's like I said, it's a specific family just for them. There's nothing else that is almost anywhere like it. It's quite alien-like. And in here we've already seen little uh, boatmen, we've seen the water striders, and there's a couple of other little insects moving around here. And that's what this little fellow will be eating, is all the invertebrates that live around here. Occasionally fish, so I'm sure they'd eat tadpoles too, but that is very cool. He's he's, he is, look how, look how slowly he's going. And I think it's important when you live in water like this to not move around too quickly, especially when you're that size, because a bird could come and swoop down and uh, will come and get you. Look at it. That's, that is amazing. Now, I really want to catch this thing, and I think we're going to have to come and visit back here a little bit later because I think we need to have a closer look at this guy under the microscope, and I'm sure James is jumping for joy in his tent. He's moving. He's going backwards using those legs. Now, it can't be too easy to move around in this mud. I think even a little insect would sink into it. And that's incredible that it's moving backwards. I didn't know that, I thought that predominantly they'd be moving forward, and I think it's just maybe turning itself around at the moment. Now, Sean, you're wondering if these little guys are part of the crayfish family. I, am, I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that these guys are completely separate. These are more like an insect rather than a crustacean. And like I said, I'll, I actually don't know too much about the water scorpions, but perhaps James can have a look, little look on the interweb or perhaps in one of his books as to what family this guy belongs to. I think it, it starts with an N, if I'm not mistaken, Nepidae or something along those lines. But I could be butchering the word, of course. Um, but look at it. Look at those little legs. So it's only got one, two, three legs by the look of it. What are you doing? He's kicking with its back legs now. And of course, it's like almost like a whip scorpion. You can see it's got that very, very long strand on the end, like a little tail. Now, Zena, you're wondering if water scorpions have stingers. Uh, no, I think that you'd be able to pick this up and you wouldn't get uh, harmed by it. They do have the, those sort of front, I don't know if you could call them pedipalps or what you would call the front ones. You can see that they've got it forward that resemble the, the claws of a... Um, of an actual scorpion. So I think that that's what they're using to capture their prey with. So I, I don't think that they have a stinger at all. That long sort of strand at the back, maybe that's used for breeding, perhaps laying eggs, but that I don't think would hurt you at all. Look at it, it's coming out of the water now. That is absolutely incredible. And the trail that it leaves behind almost resembles that of a millipede, don't you think? Oh my goodness, we need to remember this. This is going to be a, a lot of fun, I think, to come back and visit it. And wouldn't it be great now if it would show us how it's able to capture its prey? I'm sure it uses an ambush technique where it will sit and lie and wait in the mud and hope that something comes towards it where it will then snatch it and then devour it. That's amazing. I can't take my eyes off of it. See how it's flattened itself completely now? Now it blends in really well. It blends in just to its track. And I wonder if they don't do what crabs do and sort of shimmy themselves further into the sand so that they put sort of debris over their backs. It, it looks like it has done something along those lines before. It's got a sort of a, a thin layer of silt covering its body. But that's incredible. So it's sitting still now, and I think it's moving from spot to spot, hoping to catch something. Now, Gail, you're wondering if they lay eggs. I'm most certainly sure that they do lay eggs, and I'm sure that they will lay probably a quite a few at a time. I'm actually, like I said, I'm not too familiar with water scorpions. I'm going to have to go back and do quite a bit of research. I have not seen a water scorpion 
in years. I don't even, can't even tell you when the last time that I saw one. It could have even been well before I was a trained guide. It's not something that you get to see every day. Oh, there we go. Look, it's burying itself now. See how it is? It's shifting itself into that mud. It is nice and soft. And then it uses its legs as well to push the mud towards it. And now it's completely disappearing. Look at that. Only its little tail sticking out. So that's the most amazing technique. Sitting there, waiting, hoping that a little insect, a little boatman, a little fish, a little something is going to come towards it and come close enough that it will be able to grab it. Well, that was fantastic. That's definitely the highlight of my walk so far. James has now found one of his favorite insects and that is a shield bug.